There's kind of, it seems like a bit of a glass ceiling when you get, or for me I found when I was kind of scaling up staff and I got to maybe about four or five people and then you lose somebody and then you got to get somebody else in and train them up. And so you kind of, you lose 20, 20, 25% of your workforce there. And it, it can be, it can be frustrating. Around 2004, I lost a key hire in the agency and I was like, oh, I've seen this before. What am I going to do here? And so I thought about partnering and I started talking to people who had partnered before and everybody said, don't partner. It's awful. Why would you want to do that? And so uh, I decided to partner with some people. Um, <laughs> and and uh, very luckily, like the people that I, I met, um, they were in the, in the industry. They had another agency. Uh, we had kind of differing skill sets. Uh, we got along very well. And now I think what happened out of that was, you know, in my head, you kind of take the ability to manage, say, a team of five to be able to manage a team of 15 or 20 people. Um, and, and then at that point, you know, you're driving revenues and you can start to bring in other middle managers and stuff like that. And it helped us kind of get through that glass ceiling. So anyway, what happened was he came to us with a full business model to take SCOA to 13 states. And it was one of those moments where we just felt a little bit jarred. And to make a long story short, um, we opened our first um, licensed store, which we call our concept store, in Boston in August. And you know, their plans are to open two more in the next couple of years. And it's going really amazingly well. And the concept is really taking off there much more quickly even than it has in Canada, um, which is interesting. So, uh, and we're opening another one next week over on the North Shore, which is a concept store. So we're really changed the tune. Um, and I think Locke really had a lot to do with that because he just happened to walk into our store in, in Vancouver and the stars were all aligned that day. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. Luck definitely, I think it's luck, who knows? Who cares? Because <laughs> 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 you had the right concept. Yeah. I, I would say I just really was passionate and believed in what I was doing and thought, you know, I was willing to work really hard and work long hours to take that next step, but I've taken quite a few steps. And then the next, after building <coughs> this whole thing up, leaving that to go and do this. And then from this, even at this stage where we moved to a new location and we financed it totally internally, it was still like, okay, do you really want to go there? Why do you want to go there? Like questioning myself. But you have to believe in yourself first. Absolutely, that's, to me, that was like the real thing that I got over is like believing in yourself. In the business itself, I would say we're still trying to find our sweet spot. We're so early. We have a couple of customers that have seen our demo and said, yeah, I like what you guys are doing and I, you know, I'm happy to engage with you and help you develop the product and give you feedback. But I don't have any paying customers yet, right? And I think you don't know where your sweet spot is until you get a few paying customers. <laughs> and so that's your income. <laughs> so we're still you know, working our way through that. But again, hopefully with direct customer feedback, which I think is, is so important. Um, that we will end up building a product that hits that sweet spot. Um, but I'm still you know, kind of find, trying to find that right now. The best uh, entrepreneurs that we interact with anyway are A, you know, they're extremely passionate about what they do or else they wouldn't have been successful in the first place. They had to have some luck along the way, uh, certainly, and they had to have some great people that believed in them uh, along the way. And then they needed to also, I think, to take it to that really next level, um, needed to have the confidence to rely on a team to help work with them, to help continue to build out their business. It is all about people, and it's all about uh, building relationships and understanding uh, your customers and you know, where your sweet spot is for your business, and having faith uh, and inspiring and uh, being able to be part of a, a larger group that believes in something uh, greater that you can do with a business. And if you're not able to understand uh, the marketplace that you compete in, what your competitors are doing, what your customers care about, value and want, and are willing to pay for, it doesn't really matter what your business plan says, you're never gonna be able to figure out how to make any money. So for me, it was a bit of a different business model when I got started because I wasn't going after money. Um, not at 15, that came when I was 16 and wanted a car. Um, 
<laughs> but it started off as a hobby of something I just wanted to do, and it's something that I frequently visited online doing, and it really worked out. We do this on a large scale. We get about 43 million people a month to our website. So we're able to reach a lot of eyeballs, and that's essentially where we make the money from.